It was considered completely modern scientific Victorian medicine in the treatment of hysteria. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 inventions with disturbing backstories. Thanks in large part to Haber's invention, Germany was able to continue manufacturing ammunition from synthetic nitrate and fight on. For this list, we'll be going into the surprisingly dark or upsetting origins of many common inventions and everyday items. If there's a shocking origin of an invention that you're shocked wasn't originally on our list, let us know in the comments. Number 10. Kleenex the name brand in facial tissues, to the point where they're practically a synonym for them, Kleenex got their start during the First World War. Kleenex Ultra Soft Tissues. Three layers strong for sneezes, smudges, and everything in between. While their signature product would have certainly been useful for people with the Spanish flu in 1918, it wasn't actually introduced as a facial tissue at the time. In fact, it was for another, even deadlier danger that they were developed. Something happened in trench warfare that changed the course of the war and changed the way we understand warfare today, and that is chemical warfare. During the war, cotton proved to be in short supply. What later became known as Kleenex in 1924 was first created as a type of crepe paper that was used in filters in gas masks. A Kleenex might seem like poor protection between your lungs and a deadly gas, but it was better than having no filter at all. After the war ended, the Kimberly Clark Corporation still had the recipe for the lightweight cotton alternative and was looking for a way to market it to the masses under the slogan, Don't carry a cold in your pocket. Number 9. Telegraph. Samuel Morse was not the first person to think of a telegraph, but his world-famous Morse code and development of a single-wire telegraph allowed communications over long distances to really take off. Oddly enough, it's likely that this is an iconic sound you're familiar with, but it's equally likely that you never really encounter it in your daily modern life anymore. This sound is Morse code. It's unfortunate that his interest in telegraphy was likely the result of a personal tragedy. Morse was also an artist and would frequently go on trips away from home for commissions from his clients. He was commissioned by the city of New York to paint Marquis de Lafayette. While he was traveling, his wife Lucretia wrote to him from their home back in New Haven, Connecticut. During one of these trips, Morse received word that his wife was sick and he hurried home directly. Tragically, she was already dead and interred when he arrived. Had Morse been able to use his later invention, he likely would have been able to see her during her final days. Morse's idea is simple. By turning a switch on and off, you can send a series of electrical impulses across a wire to a distant receiver. If you create a pattern or code, you can send a message. Number 8. Magnetic Tape while it may be outdated now, magnetic tape was revolutionary for storing audio and later video recordings in the 20th century, for everything from radio to TV. Tape. Basically the same tape that filled our homes in the 80s and 90s in the form of cassettes and VHS. However, this innovation was first perfected in Nazi Germany. German electronics companies developed the improved recording technologies during the 30s, and by the advent of World War II, the Nazis had improved audio recordings compared to their allied foes. A US American scavenger operating in Germany, Jack T. Mullen, found some amazing magnetic tapes in the field, and he was absolutely amazed. It wasn't until the Allies' victory that magnetic tape was discovered by other countries and proliferated throughout the rest of the world. After World War II, Magnetic tape recorder technology obtained from Germany began to take hold as a recording medium in the States. Plenty of innovations came out of Nazi Germany, but this is one of the more surprising. Number 7. Baby monitors. Baby monitors are one of new parents' best tools. Say hello to a new class in monitoring. Miku Pro. Keeping one in your child's room lets you hear their discomfort and cries from anywhere in the house. But the necessity for these devices was hammered home by one of the United States' most infamous kidnapping cases. Famous aviator Charles Lindbergh and his wife went through every parent's nightmare in 1932 when they awoke to discover their son missing and a ransom note in his bedroom. The Lindberghs would experience one of the most severe media frenzies in history. The kidnapping was called the crime of the century, and Charles Jr.'s heartbreaking death left an impact on parents all over the country. The nation is transfixed as the manhunt for the Lindbergh kidnapper begins. An egregious act immediately dubbed the crime of the century. Eugene McDonald was one such, and he created the radio nurse in 1937, the world's first baby monitor to listen in on his infant daughter's room. Number six, radar. The world wars in the early 20th century were also an arms race to see who could create the next deadly weapon. 
One idea that fascinated scientists and military leaders alike was the concept of a death ray. The British government feared an aerial invasion and wanted a death ray that could knock German planes out of the sky. British scientists hoped to discover a way to use radio waves to kill foes at a distance. However, the power requirements were enormous. Ultimately, they hit on the idea of using the echoes of radio waves to detect incoming airplanes in the sky, which was arguably even better, tactically speaking. During the Battle of Britain, towers like Stenegot sent radio pulses out into the sky and measured the echoes back to work out the direction that German raids were approaching from. While many nations came up with the idea independently, Britain, with the help from American factories, figured it out first. Teams from Germany, Japan and the US were all working on their own radar systems, but the UK's was the most advanced. Thus, radar was born. Number five, vibrators. Let's all try to be mature about this, okay? One of the first five electric gadgets, besides the sewing machine, fan, toaster, and tea kettle, was a plug-in sexual stimulator. Vibrators are sex toys, yes, but they weren't originally used with sex in mind, explicitly anyway. The electric vibrator was invented in the 19th century and used to relieve various maladies, including pain relief, tumors, and hysteria. The medical establishment has offered hysterical women a veritable smorgasbord of treatments. Warm baths, ice baths, water jets, mesmerization, horseback riding even. But I favor a more direct approach. The last of these was most pertinent to Vibrator's eventual purpose, as it was essentially medical professionals misunderstanding women experiencing frustration. Like a lot of manual tasks that are difficult and possibly onerous, it was mechanized. And so was born the Vibrator. And the fact that the relief of said frustration was considered a medical procedure at the time is just all kinds of disturbing. Number four, ammonia fertilizer. Fertilizer is essential in crop growing, and natural sources can often lack the nitrogen that leads to efficient crop yields. Enter Fritz Haber and Karl Bosch. These two German scientists created the Haber-Bosch method, which creates ammonia from nitrogen in the atmosphere. Without this reaction, farmers would be capable of producing enough food for only 4 billion people. Our current population is just over 7 billion people. So without the Haber process, over 3 billion people would be without food. Most of the world's annual food production comes as a result of fertilizer created with this process, and it's likely that the world couldn't support as many people as it does today without it. However, the two of them also worked on weapons development during the First World War. Most believe he was far more interested in helping Germany make more explosives. Because while ammonia can be made to produce fertilizer, it can also be easily converted into nitric acid, a very important ingredient for explosives with Haber being considered the father of chemical warfare due to his work on chlorine gas. Something to think about the next time you're doing yard work. Haber would create even deadlier gases, combining chlorine with phosgene, which blocks metabolic processes and leads to pulmonary edema, death by fluid accumulation in the lungs. Number three, GPS. Global Positioning System, or GPS, is a satellite system that can track signals all over the globe. These satellites are continuously beaming data down to us on Earth, which is in turn received by devices such as your phone or navigational units in your cars, allowing you to see where you are on the planet. It's also owned and operated by the United States military. While some may find this disturbing, what's arguably more upsetting is why the US military began allowing the use of it by almost anyone. In 1983, Korean Airlines Flight 007 was flying from New York to Seoul via Alaska. A navigation error led to the plane flying into Soviet airspace, and the civilian craft was shot down. The United States reacts with revulsion to this attack. Loss of life appears to be heavy. We can see no excuse whatsoever for this appalling act. While the tragic loss of life was awful and led to a rise in tensions between the two superpowers, President Ronald Reagan decided to make GPS available on a global scale to prevent similar avoidable losses of private aircraft. Among the rest of us, there is one protective measure, an international radio wavelength on which pilots can communicate with planes of other nations if they are in trouble or lost. Number two, bicycles. What do climate change, a volcano, and dead horses have to do with the creation of the bicycle? Everything. 1816 was the year without a summer. It was so called because a massive volcanic eruption in Indonesia the previous year coated the world in ash and clouds for nearly a year. 
In Europe, China, India, and North America, 1816 was a year of endless winter. Snow fell in July, rivers froze in August, and crops failed on a gigantic scale. This led people to slaughtering their horses for food when crops could not grow. And with horses being the primary mode of transport, the inventor Baron von Dreis was inspired the following year to invent the first hobby horse, or velocipede, known today as a bicycle. The machine produced by Baron von Dreis had two wheels of the same size, handlebars and a brake, so much of what we know from a modern bike. While cycling didn't catch on immediately, his invention proved that a dark year for the world could lead to good things. By around 1900, the bicycle was a mode of transport for all. What started out as a plaything for the nobility was now mobilizing the masses. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Treadmills Treadmills have been around for thousands of years in some form or another. However, while their use as a man or animal power source for mills is well documented, fewer people know about their connection to prisons. In the 1800s, treadmills were created to punish English prisoners. Like the treadmills connected to farms or actual mills, penal treadmills did power devices, but they were also a form of punishment for prisoners sentenced to hard labor. Most often seen in England, these torturous machines tormented prisoners in six-hour shifts. Well, it turns out prison treadmills had a problem. They were deadly. Prisoners were expected to treadmill for at least six hours a day. That meant prisoners logged over 10,000 feet, the equivalent of climbing the CN Tower over five times every day. This caused prisoners' bodies to break down. Naturally, they were eventually abolished, but they were still used for most of the 19th century. Really puts your workout into perspective, doesn't it? When the jogging craze hit the U.S. in the 1970s, the treadmill was thrust back into the limelight as an easy and convenient way to improve aerobic fitness. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.